Now, believe me, I'm very well aware that I do bring this up often, but I really wholeheartedly believe that Bob Iger is absolutely the worst Disney CEO of all time, really outperforming Bob Chapek and his lack of leadership and his lack of leadership skills and what he did to the Disney parks and the movies, etc. Iger only made things worse, and he is the leading reason why the stocks are not making a rebound throughout all of 2023 so far, and it might not even make a rebound for 2024 the way things are looking right now. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you are new and like this video to see future updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. And let's get into what's going on with the whole Disney purge situation that just got a whole lot worse. Now look, we know that it's not just because of Bob Iger, but it's also back rooted to the board of directors, a lot of which are the main concern of what's been going on with their whole DEI agenda getting forced down the public's throats and how a lot of people are beginning to wake up quite rapidly, really beginning to see what Disney's all about. And so I think that's the good side of all of this is that a lot of people are beginning to get a more vivid view of Disney's terrible side here of what they're trying to force and it's all rooted back also to let's not forget about Vanguard and BlackRock. You know we can't you know forget about those two top shareholders just to name a few by the way of them pushing these agendas and funding Disney because Disney knows that they are funding them, and without them, they would have, of course, a worse situation than ever. So what's interesting about this has a lot to do with what Bob Iger and the board are pushing with this Disney purge. Now, given that Iger is making the worst calls throughout all of this year, one major development has to do with the final plans for the upcoming Disney purge that will impact all areas of Disney per Bob Iger's request and something the board agreed to. One significant update has to do with the fact that starting in quarter one of 2024, Disney is moving ahead with their strategy to fire thousands of employees that will be laid off from Lucasfilm and Marvel Studios as they are preparing to make both Star Wars and Marvel movies as well as TV shows smaller scale with less cast and crew. Disney is also getting ready to purge specific A-listers from returning in their Star Wars and Marvel projects in order to reduce spending as per Bob Iger's cost containment plan. However, the Disney purge doesn't just involve the firing of thousands of employees and creatives ranging from multiple studios, but also the removal of a significant amount of Disney Plus content at the same exact time, raising rates throughout 2024 in order to adjust for inflation is Bob Iger's biggest excuse right now. So let me just stop here before I get to the next big bit about this development is that the fact that Iger and the board are doubling down on this cause containment plan and how now a part of that solution is by ridding of some A-list stars from appearing in their future Marvel shows, movies, same exact thing with Star Wars, to save money. That is, I think, all the more proof that Disney is in a worse position than ever before. And Bob Iger, by the way, he can say whatever he wants to say. He can say that he has no concern about the future of Disney and what's going on with Star Wars and Marvel. He's got to realize that a lot of people know that he's lying and that he is just saying what he has to say to please the shareholders. The shareholders are not happy, all right? The, not the top shareholders, we're talking about in the general sense here. The shareholders are not happy with the way things are going for Disney. A lot of people that I know that have a lot of stock in Disney are very unhappy. They're about to pull the plug on them within the next month or so. Based on what's been going on with the movies, the Disney parks, Disney Plus, the whole Comcast situation, it's not looking good, guys. And basically what they're latching on to, the only people that they really pay attention to when it comes to shareholders are like the top guys. People like BlackRock and Vanguard and a whole lot more. But what's interesting about this is the fact that Bob Iger and the board have the gall and have the audacity to get rid of some A-listers from their Marvel movies and Star Wars films, TV shows, etc. to save money. That's an even worse image that you could put out there than ever before, in my opinion. 
Now, let's move on to the next big piece about all of this where matters get even worse, shall we? Now, those in the corporate ladder are also planned to get laid off in the first quarter of 2024 as well, and this will also impact the number of employees over at the Disney parks, globally speaking. Strangely, at the same exact time, Bob Iger still insists that he is not concerned about the future of Disney and where it is going in the long term. Additionally, Disney is also looking to canceling more Star Wars projects, including The Dawn of the Jedi movie by James Mangold, and the other TV shows that will get out of that will actually get axed as well because of what's been going on with the cost containment plan and budgeting limitations. And to top things off, they are also planning on dropping John Favreau from many Disney movies that he was supposed to either direct or produce. This was unrelated, by the way, to Star Wars, and it was reportedly more Lion King centric, with there more films coming out and about that are currently in early development. Now again, guys, I don't know if you all knew this, but they are doubling down on this plan of theirs or strategy to make a Lion King cinematic universe. They were going to do this with Snow White, it fell apart, thankfully, but Lion King is still a go. They're going to have a Mufasa prequel, a Scar prequel, they want a Lion King 2 that takes place after the events of the 2019 remake. And that's just for starters. They want to keep expanding and quite possibly expanding to TV shows on Disney+. Plus. I don't see it. I don't know why they would even want to embrace this. It doesn't seem like there's a big demand for a cinematic universe of a Disney animated film. I don't understand this. But anyway, we know that Bob Iger has got no clue of what's coming to him. Because all of these decisions that he makes, he probably thinks it's for the best. And if he doesn't think it's for the best, he's probably just dumb and doesn't know what to do. But in the end, I believe at the fourth quarter of 2024, maybe even the first of 2025 is where you're really going to see Disney beginning to crumble after what happens with Snow White, the Marvels, the Acolyte, these two, or should I say these three installments by Disney are going to be big bombs either at the box office or through ratings on Disney Plus, doesn't matter. It's going to drive away a lot of fans on all fronts, Marvel, Disney in general, as well as Star Wars. So we know that Bob Iger also is going to talk more about this at the last earnings call, which by the way, guys, that's going to most likely take place around November. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the days to come. But Bob Iger is going to address more concerns about the shareholders you know, more of the shareholders at the bottom of the list, the majority, you know, right? So, given that people like BlackRock and Vanguard own most, most of Disney, it seems like that Bob Iger is only looking at them. He doesn't really care about anybody else, and that's the problem. So anyway, I would really love to hear everyone's take on this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.